Uh, if you see, the structure of the program is something like that. Well, when you have your characters designed, you choose the one that wants to speak, the type of action, okay, and then the text that they are going to pronounce, okay, or that the students can also record the voice on there, okay. Uh, I use this activity, as I told you, using uh, um, cooperative learning, especially because I had a, a special case of um, a student with disability. And in our case, we also introduced, because it's uh, automatic, the option of subtitles. Because as you have the text written in the app, it's only marking uh, a button, and you also have subtitles. So this makes the video more accessible. As I told you, I used it in class. It was fantastic. And also um, a student of mine also did it in primary education and the result was very good. Of course, this can be as difficult, as complex as you want with the dialogues, okay? But you can use it. The only key here is designing the characters that you don't need any type of knowledge of language even, <laughs> and then knowing the actions. But it's quite intuitive because you can click on them, choose, for example, shrugging, and you can see what the character makes. So they are uh, unconsciously learning the vocabulary of actions or blow a kiss. They do it and they say, oh, this is the action that I want or not, this is something that I don't like. Okay, and the same with the sounds. There are lots of uh, special effects, let's say, like a phone ringing or whatever, that they are also for free and they can try and see what is the type of uh, movement, action, sound that they want to, to, to express. The only limitation, but it's not because of the program that is free, but in general is that there is a maximum of two characters per frame per scene. But while you divide the, the the plot and there's no problem, okay? So I will show you a real example. In this case, uh, they introduced their voices, okay? So if you see, the result is quite visual and it's very easy to use. I promise if you have the, the chance, if you have some time, take five minutes and, and I think that you will fall in love with this because of all the possibilities that it gives you. The only thing is... Sorry. Uh, so as I said, and you can even modify the face expressions and this movement of touching the shoulder, 
that, but there are many, many possibilities of movement, even uh, shaking hands. So, and when they, in this case, because they used their own voices, but if, if you uh, use the, the text to voice option, it's a little bit like a robot in comparison, but it works. It can be perfectly understood in English, in Spanish, no. Spanish is a disaster. In Spanish, it's better to record it, because if not, I tell you that it's very difficult to, to understand it, OK? Maybe in the future, who knows? And uh, for the subtitles in the, in the app, you only have to mark a button with a T. And the same text that you have previously written is shown on the screen. So it's very good. And I tell you, when they know what they want to express, this takes half an hour maximum. And if you heard the, the noise at the back, was because they did it in class. So there were other students also recording their voices. But more or less, with a normal laptop or a tablet, it works perfectly. Okay? And even in some cases, because it happens, uh, if you have the, the app downloaded into your device, you don't need internet access to produce it, but you save it in your computer, and then when you finish, you use the Wi-Fi or whatever to publish it, because with this, you can publish it in the Plotagon uh, website, but also you can download it. In this case, um, I told the student to, to send me the, um, the final results. And then you have it as an MP4 that you can play anywhere. So for example, in the case that we said earlier, for the tutorials, if you are giving instructions that you don't need to, sh to show uh, something that you are doing with your hands, first do that. Then, in this case, it's um, very easy and, as I said, quite, quite fast. Okay, in my case, the whole process, I know that my students were older, but they didn't know the, the app earlier. Uh, it, this was done in a couple of sessions of one hour and a half. And they even presented in class. Okay, so, you know, it is quite easy to get familiar with the, with the tool. I tell you that it's very visual because the results, from my point of view, are very, very good. It's a pity that we cannot work with that here today, but we don't have the devices. But as I said, yes? Um, uh, you can choose. In, in our case, uh, I worked uh, with them using cooperative learning. They were in groups of five. And uh, they, uh, they used one account for the whole group. Okay? In, in my case, as they were over 18, they used one of their personal accounts. Even you can register using, um, using a Gmail, Google, a Google uh, account, or using Facebook, okay? So if you're working with um, primary students, maybe you can create a Gmail account with this purpose and register the Gmail account for that so they don't have to use uh, Facebook or wherever. Okay, something like group one, uh, Plotagon, imagine, at gmail.com. Something like that. And you assign um, each group the, the email account and the password to enter in Plotagon. And there's no problem because you don't receive anything from, from the app or wherever. Okay, the option of uh, Facebook is just because you know that many, many web pages have that for, for register because in many cases it's easier and faster. But in the case of primary education, I think that the safer way is a Gmail account for that and that's all. And even you can use it from uh, one year to another or from one, one class to another. You can reuse it, okay? So, but it's quite easy to, to use it, as I said. And, and they like it because they see how their plots become real in something like technological, digital, and very attractive. And in this case, because it was mainly in a house but you can choose different scenarios, and, and it's quite interesting. 
Okay? Uh, a limitation that I found is, for example, for natural science, there are no animals. So in this case, it can be difficult. But for example, there is a prehistorical man, a caveman, that, that you can use, for example, for social science for history. Okay? So as I said, you have to identify your needs, and according to your needs, use one tool or another. OK, and now I go on. So I strongly recommend you to, to try Plotagon. Then you will decide if it's useful for you or not. But I tell you that it's very good. In the case of creation, uh, it was said previously in the case of Geniali. Okay. In this case, they had uh, the video in, in Vimeo, so probably uh, well, I couldn't download it. So probably um, you can access there, but the idea of, uh, is making presentations, okay? And not people know that, but Geniali is a Spanish company and is from Cordoba. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a little bit hidden in their web page, but it's, it's very good. Um, in the case of Pautun, do you know Pautun? No? Pautun, the first on top. No? For short videos, the results are also very good. And I'll show you an example. I will upload it to, to Moodle in the case of Pautun, but the idea is that in a very easy way, you can create presentations even in which you can uh, show that like you are writing by hand easily, okay? And it's quite visual, but especially for short videos. If the video is more than two, three minutes, it's a little bit boring, okay? And in the case of Canva, do you know Canva? Canva is mainly for preparing posters and leaflets. And uh, it's very easy to use, but you have to consider that you have to use the free items. Because in many cases, there are items that you have to pay for. Maybe it's one dollar, but you have to pay. So if you avoid the, the items that you have to pay, you can make very good things. Like, for example, in this case, oh, yes, I, I had here Pautun, okay? So I present Pautun and then Canva. This is the, the structure of the software. So if you see, the left part is like PowerPoint, so you can identify like different slides. But the movements, the transitions, are much more visual than PowerPoint. But as I said, more than three minutes, watching things moving and writing and this is a little bit boring. So for specific uh, concepts, for specific ideas, it's very good because you can improve um, this process because it's very, very visual. But personally, longer than this is a little bit, you know, tiring. And as I said, in the case of Canva, okay, I... There are many layouts for different purposes, for posters, for um, 
the standard size of the of the page for flyers and it's just moving the image to the place that you want to to put it you can modify the fonts and it's a little bit more flexible than powerpoint in my in my personal case what i've done when using canva is combining canva with powerpoint or with keynote in mac why because in some cases some of the specific images or vectors that you want to use in canva you have to pay for them but you can have them for free in other web pages, like for example um, in Freepik. Do you know Freepik? Freepik is a very good database of images, vectors, and photographs. So you can combine both. So in my personal case, what I usually do is I download the, um, the layout, the design, and then I add the uh, parts that I need from Canva. So you can combine both and it's quite easily because you can free pick, free, uh, F -R -E -P -I -K. yeah, pick. Okay, free pick. Uh, this is uh, a huge database that is getting bigger and bigger. I think that this company is from Malaga. It's a Spanish company. And, and they are investing lots of money in increasing their database of resources. Okay, free pick, F -R -E -E -P -I -K dot com. Okay, so there, if you need to prepare presentation, a poster, uh, something for your lessons, you will have high quality resources, high quality images, and it's very good. Uh, but this is uh, only for a while, or is forever? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In okay. Yes. Yeah, so, in the case of Powtoon, for example, uh, they give you uh, 40, uh, 48 hours with all the premium um, items for free, but it's 48 hours. So <laughs> you need to concentrate a lot on that. But if not, there's no problem because there are many items that you can use uh, without using the premium uh, items. It's not essential, okay? It's, it's like in, in Plotagon, that it's not essential the use of everything premium that you have to pay for that, okay? In the case of Canva, it's true that it's more limited, okay? In the, in the case of Geniali, you have uh, the link to the Vimeo, okay? So you can see how, how it works there, okay? Then uh, the last item, in the case of collaboration, okay, learning by sharing, uh, probably you have used Padlet. Somebody mentioned that earlier, if I'm not wrong, that in this case, it's a kind of huge um, board in which you can pin items of different topics. For example, you want to develop a project on history, on the French Revolution, for example, and a student can share this dashboard to collaborate among them. Okay? So you can see here. So as you can see, this is collaborative because all the students can publish them, can pin their information, for example, about a topic. In this case, it's about um, Greek history, okay, or in mythology. But you can create the project, and they share information, and they add the items of information that they find interesting about that. And finally, 
I have this web page that you can see here that is ePulse that maybe you know, but I didn't know it till quite recently. Because the idea of ePulse is find connections with other schools, other classrooms working on a topic similar to yours. So as you can see on the, on the left, on my right, you choose the country that you want to work with, the student age range, okay, that goes from five to 18 years old. So for example, in this case, in, in this search, I uh, used six to 11, that is primary education. And if you see, they have, for example, for the subjects of English, language and arts, for the ages from 11 to 15, there is a connection that you can choose to work with them and to exchange and collaborate with other students, with other classrooms all over the world. Or for example, in this case of China, what they want is from ages 7 to 15 to practice English. So it's a way to connect students all over the world. Okay, this is a kind of not alternative to e-twinning because e-twinning is European, but this is at the, at the global uh, level. e -pals. Yes. Okay. And you can even create your own project. For example, uh, you have all the terms of use and, and, um, and the privacy support there on the web page. But um, I tell you that I discovered the web page uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I have not used it. But probably they have to control this quite a lot, because the idea is teachers with teachers, and then students with students. Okay? But I discovered that, and I think that the idea is interesting. Of course, we have to be careful with safety and privacy and these things. But well, it's for you to know it, and try to look for, because as you can see, according to this, is uh, focused on a specific target groups, okay? Or the subject, or the age, okay? And they identify the, the projects, okay? And uh, even you can create your own pen pal exchange, and you can use this uh, tool to create your project. For example, you say, like for example, here you can see uh, a project about fighting poverty. In this case, it's for secondary education from 12 to 16 uh, years old. But you can join that. For, this is a teacher guide, so it shows you how to do it. I think that the, the idea is interesting. I tell you that I've not uh, used that. So I cannot answer properly this, and I prefer not to lie. <laughs> but I think that as an idea is good. Let's see how it works. But um, if you see, you have some um, safety standards. Like you can see here uh, the back, okay, with privacy certified. So it's a matter of reading the terms of use and see how they identify. Because you know, in, in some web pages for this. For example, in the case of uh, Plotagon, in the case of Powtoon, if you register with the account of your school, of your university, they associate that you are in the education field. Probably they use something like that, I guess, but it's just guessing, okay? But I think that the idea, as it is, is good, it's interesting, okay? So, well, we don't have time for that, and we don't have Wi-Fi, but if possible, for the final project, try to choose a resource and try to use it for, you know, for your lessons because you will, uh, you will see that students can be very motivated with some of these because they are seeing results quite visual and quite interesting for them. So some final remarks and I'll finish on time. Uh, first, collaboration is essential. This is the, the key of everything nowadays. Then try to discover, but also use new digital resources that you probably did not know earlier. Try to go global. 
I think that initiatives like eTwinning are fantastic to know other cultures, and there are also other alternatives, let's say. And please, don't get overwhelmed by technology, okay? Just take it step by step, okay? I think that this is essential. And to finish this sentence, a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. So let's try and do it, okay? So thank you.